maturity. So. Yeah. yeah. I'm mature and then I'm a child all in one mind. It's kind of weird. My therapist. Don't worry. Like, Yo, you ain't normal. You're gonna hit 28 and still feel 18. It happens. Yeah. Now, I'm gonna or you're gonna hit 30 and feel, feel fucking 50. 50. Uh, when, I hit, when I hit 30, I'm gonna feel probably like six years old. Probably along those lines. Either six or seven. Depends. You got a whole lot of life between now and then. Pretty sure as hell, dude. I don't know. <laughs> what about if soda I, pop? If I keep up this gaming grind, who knows? Oh, yeah, that soda popping thing. We could talk about that instead of the uh, e girl thing because I, I think we just mixed that out. Whatever. We'll figure it out. Somebody just wing out a topic whenever. Uh, yeah, fuck it. Alright, dicks for piss. Right, uh, go ahead and start. <laughs> Alright, who's, uh, who's talking and who's not? What do you mean? I think Is everybody in? in? Yeah, yeah we're, we're all in line. Line's on mute, but, yeah. Okay. Alright. Five. Four. Three. And welcome everybody to this episode of Streamcast. We are on episode three. My name is Trino. I'm Ruquan the Chef. It's Hoin. Jerry, what up? And we got hey, Jerry man. this time. All right, gamer joining us. We got we got a pretty decent crew going here today. All right, folks. So what's new? What's what's new topics? What's new conspiracies? I know we've had all kinds of stuff happening over the past few weeks that it's kind of hard to almost cover it all, but pretty much. In it, so so let's let's start off. Well, what's what's on everybody's mind first off? We gotta do it, Doctor Disrespect, baby. Yeah. Every fucking week, there's something new or some type of accusation coming about. Who is that guy again? Uh, it's only dude with a mustache and a mullet. You? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no mullet here, boy. I don't got enough hair for that. <laughs> I thought I saw something, man. My fault, my fault. So what, new conspiracies? We got what, any actual, like, concrete stuff to go off? So Doc broke his, uh, his silence, finally. How so? Uh, there's a couple interviews done. I briefly read through them because I'm kind of, uh, at this point, just uh, reading cliff notes to this whole stunt but uh yeah it was a couple couple interviews he did and uh was talking about how now maybe he wants to take legal action against twitch oh so he actually in this feels that it was an unrightful ban i mean that's got to be let me start off with the doctor disrespect update yeah who is that guy again? I forgot. Wasn't he like an old guy playing video games, something along those lines? Oh, so he actually in this feels that go off. So Doc broke his. Uh... That guy again. It's only dude with a mustache. You no, know, we've had all kinds of stuff happening over the. I'm Ruquan the chef. It's Hoin. Three. And welcome everybody to this episode of Streamcast. We are on episode three. My name is Trino. I'm Ruquan the Chef. It's Hoin. Jerry, what up? And we got hey, Jerry up? this time. All right, gamer joining us. We got we got a pretty decent crew going here today. All right, folks. So, what's new? What's what's new topics? What's new conspiracies? I know we've had all kinds of stuff happening over the past few weeks that it's kind of hard to almost cover it all. But pretty much. In it, so so let's let's start off. Well, what's what's on everybody's mind first off? We gotta do it, Doctor Disrespect, baby. Yeah. Every fucking week, there's something new or some type of accusation coming about. Who is that guy again? Uh, it's only dude with a mustache and a mullet. You? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> no mullet here, boy. I don't got enough hair for that. <laughs> I thought I saw something, man. My fault, my fault. So what, new conspiracies? We got what, any actual, like, concrete stuff to go off? So Doc broke his, uh, his silence, finally. How so? Uh, there's a couple interviews done. 
I briefly read through them because I'm kind of uh, at this point just uh, reading cliff notes to this whole stunt. But uh, yeah, it was a couple couple interviews he did, and uh, was talking about how now maybe he wants to take legal action against Twitch. Oh, so he actually in this feels that it was an unrightful ban. I mean, that's got to be the only. And he did sign a contract, so if they are in breach of contract, that is a possibility. I mean, what essentially, about... though, he's going against Amazon. You got to remember that. Yeah, yeah, they're like a billion dollar company. Yeah, they'll prime today ship that fucking monster. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know why, like, Slasher and everybody, all like the big, like, dra internet drama guys are like, it's too sensitive to talk about, but they know. I feel like they're yeah. doing it more for clout, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Then they're gonna follow them, and then be like, "All right, he probably he'll probably say it here, right? Like one of these times, he's gonna he's gonna come out with it, and then they just like never come out with it to like classify it, supposedly. It's like a I government mean, cause... conspiracy right here. Legal documents do tend to have some type of embargo against them, so like they could just it could be a big nothing burger, and turn into and they could just be like, "Well, since we can't talk about it, and you know they could just inflate something that could be as much as like." Like you said, he was talking to uh, a different organization, and they're like, "Well, that breaches contract. You're gone." Isn't yeah. Slasher like a super credible person, though? Like, from, my, well, from my knowledge, a bit. Is that something that he would do? Like, would he would he say something like like that just for the likes on Twitter? I don't know if I've. Ran I don't know too much about him, but yeah. I know I I've heard that he's like when it. Twitter. I don't know if I've ran I don't know too much about him, but yeah. I know I, I've heard that he's like when it comes to like insights to the esports and gaming industry, he's really crap. I don't know if I've ran old person though. Like from my, from well, my knowledge a bit. something that could be as much as like like you said he was talking to uh, a different organization and they're like well that breaches contract you're gone isn't yeah. slasher like a super credible person though like from my, well, from my knowledge a bit is that something that he would do like would he would he say something like, like that just for the likes on twitter i don't know if i've ran i don't know too much person. about him but yeah. i know i i've heard that he's like when it comes to like insights to the esports and gaming industry, he's a really credible sport. For sure. But and he be, made it out. Go ahead. But it'd be more like he's not in the he's not wrong. If like if there's legal action, even if it's as small as it is, it as it could be, he can't talk about it. So I don't oh, know okay. a single person that would not use it. Like I mean hell, you know what I mean? If you could talk about it and you can actually say, I can't talk about it because there's legitimate uh legal things Right. You know, it's kind of like, why not fucking get a good hell? We're talking about it, fucking for three weeks now. So that's like a good month of just nonstop. I see what you're saying. Uh, yeah. You know, clickbait. 
I was thinking of it along the line. I didn't even think about the illegal aspect. I was thinking along the lines like, oh, this is such a sensitive subject. Mm. So, like, crazy what he did that I can't talk about it. Okay, because, so, I know Slasher's been known to withhold uh, until he gets the full source of the information because he doesn't want to look like a jackass. That's usually what he's credible for. So, it's almost like he feels like he does truly know everything about it, but it's just too sensitive at the time to... Right. Oh, that's... Huh. I don't know. It, uh, there's so many things that, I guess, like you said, the the legal aspects I wouldn't be proficient in or know all the angles from, but a lot of the stuff I'm going, well, wouldn't he be arrested? Wouldn't there be a record for that? But maybe there wouldn't. I think, I mean... It I see what you're saying as far as clauses and shit. I was thinking being the ignorant dickhead that i am that he was like he did something so terrible that they can't talk about it you know well and that's, well, I think that's what everybody thought sorry to cut you off oh no you're good homie uh i think that's what everybody thought is well it was it was just so abrupt and so sudden that everybody was you know left to let their imaginations run wild so uh i mean as for a, like a legal thing it makes more sense that way because at this point, if it was like, you know, like you said before, like sexual assault or something like that, where it was outside of Twitch, but it somehow breached his contract, that would like, it would be in the news. There would be, you know, court records. There would be, you know, it, it's kind of hard to keep that hush hush. Right. Yeah. Or it could, you know, another theory that I haven't seen a lot of people talk about, at least, I mean, I haven't done that much research since the beginning, but, um, you know, during the cancel culture where people were digging up things that people posted or said like years ago, maybe someone got after his ass about the whole uh, like his the thing he would do towards poor uh, Asian people, you know, back in the H1Z1 days, he'd get killed. and Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. And like mock Cantonese, you know. I think, I mean, if that was the case, though, don't you think that with especially how prevalent, you know, dragging and cancel culture is, they would have just been like, this is what he said, get him out. Like, they or been... they'd be proud of it almost, of like, look at or, us, we got rid of this guy because of this. Yeah. Or, you know, the, it could, like, that could tie into the theory that that's just something that they used or they will bring up when they, like, you know, uh, a lot of people were speculating that they just paid Dr. Disrespect millions and millions of dollars to stick with Twitch with the whole Mixer migration. Yeah. And since Mixer got canceled and there's not really anywhere for these two like powerhouse streamers to go to save to cut their losses, they just dug something up to ban Dr. Disrespect for to avoid his contract and avoid dishing out all that money. Amazon is known for cutting corners and save money. That's true. You know what I mean? Because like that was the one of the the most plausible theories that I've heard about and that people have touched on, is they just paid this dude a shit ton of money and their their biggest competitor just got cut off, basically or just went under basically, so now they can save face and, I mean because they still have Summit they still have, the yeah lyric, they still have I would just be curious if they were in breach of contract by doing that. Now I'd assume yeah. somebody like Amazon has already addressed their billion dollar fucking lawyers or whatever it is and been like, Oh yeah, snip them because of this. But right. I, yeah, I mean, now, now can I ask the question real quick? Does everybody truly believe going into that final stream where he fuck and then gets off stream? He comes out and says that none of that had anything to do with his ban. That he wasn't even that. aware. Final stream where he fuck and then gets off stream. He comes out and says that none of that had anything to do with his ban. That he wasn't even that. aware of his ban at all until he's on a friend's stream and all of his uh, um, applications and stuff that he's able to do are taken away. He said that? Yeah, he said that it had nothing to do with it. 
and I don't believe it one bit. I'm calling Cap. You don't say like fuck out of nowhere for like no reason because supposedly he was saying that for like the whole COVID thing, like we're gonna get through this everything. But like, right? That's what he was acting like is oh we're gonna get through this and that it was all the a COVID problem or everybody well, can lost like a nowhere to be honest unless he like picked his phone up and found out a family member was sick or something and he was just like that's set what, back you know what i mean even, like that's a, that's a reach it's a reach right but, but like, you even see at one point in there he's sitting there doing it he's like kind of talking and then he even like looks and is almost like all right stop let me just get this last couple minutes like and i think that was his wife coming in going what the fuck and him just like, all right, chill the fuck out. I think, I mean, for him, because at the end of the day, Doctor Disrespect is a character, right? Like, he's going, it's like, it's like wrestling. He goes in as a persona. And for him to break that persona, which I'm never sorry. really happens on stream, seems a little bit fishy to just kind of be like, yeah, it was just COVID. Uh, was just, right. Know, COVID's been going on for so long, but out of, out of nowhere today, it's, it's really, it's really, uh, it's really, it's really sus. Um, one thing actually I did notice uh, was on his last stream when he got that text message. I mean, you see a legitimate change, and then he goes into talking about this. I believe he was like an uh, a Holocaust denier, talk this conspiracy theorist talking about lizard that, people. Is what it was. Yeah, lizard people, and uh, it's like he, he like literally he was like everything was fine, and then he gets that text, whatever that text was. And then he just starts talking about that, and that's where it kind of starts ending, because like there was only maybe like another twenty minutes of uh, stream after that, and you're just like, "That's the Illuminati, bro." His know. whole think... demeanor just changed, though. I mean, it looked like he just found out that he lost his wife or something. I, I like yeah, yeah. you can just tell the shock and awe and the trying to keep it together and just keep talking, and then to end with "fuck" in stream. I mean. Man, COVID really just got to him that day, I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he definitely got some cats out of the bag news, dude. And fuck, it was like, oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the reason a lot of people also locked inside doors for a while now, too. So oh, yeah. That's the reason to get pretty angry pissed. I, this was towards, well, it's, I mean, we're nowhere near the end of COVID, but it's, things have been tapered off and states have been, been reopened. So I, I just think it's kind of him trying to play that off. There's no, I mean, there's no way he went, he went like almost ghost, like ghost white was just like, uh, but it was, it's so weird to come out and say that whenever he's fully ex taking the, why the fuck did Twitch ban me stance to then go back by doing that and acting like, oh, that, that wasn't correlated at all. That had nothing to do with it is really just pointless. It doesn't do anything for either side Everything. of the argument. Everything's so fucky. I mean, it's just like, I, like, a, I think it's, a, it's all a big stunt or if not i guess we'll find out and, yeah and another year or something I don't know. hopefully uh shit he's uh was this last week that said 90 days he'll be able to talk about it so we're now at like 70 something <laughs> he didn't say can i get 3,000 likes or 3,000 that uh, was uh <laughs> that was keem i thought no, yeah, fuck him, so. no, no, no. That's exactly. yeah. That's that's Didn't not. Didn't Leafy do that too? Didn't Leafy do something like that? Like sure, three thousand tweets or something, and I'll I'll leave everything. <laughs> I'm sure plenty of people fucking did that. That was I. The one I saw was definitely Kimi. It was like if I get. I'll X do it right now. I'll, I'll <laughs> release. Oh, man, we do that shit, man. Come on, we should still do it. Yeah, that's what I was referring to. I, I was just saying. I, I mean, <laughs> actually, guys, I know exactly what happened. Like and subscribe to the channel. At a hundred thousand likes, I'll bust the news. You know, you got it, man. We've been holding on to it this whole time. Fucking yeah, not, jokes on you, jigs up. We just making stuff up right now. Low key, it's I low. honestly wouldn't be surprised if this was some kind of like crazy scandal. Wait, what? I wouldn't either. I mean, Twitch streamers are basically on par with like fucking celebrities right now with yeah. the gaming community. Yep. Speaking of celebrities, and a possible caveat into the conspiracy theory is Logic is going to Twitch. And apparently he's getting fat stacks. How Almost fat we talking? Seven thick? figures plus possibly here. Oh, that's pretty thick, yeah. That's pretty and thick. he's lie. coming off of Doctor Disrespect getting banned. I mean, remember, one of you guys were talking about uh, saving money. You know yeah. what I mean? What cut one big streamer and get logic? 
who can literally do, you know, in theory, can go on like, you know, just chatting and start dropping uh, lyrics and doing like freestyle and yeah. a plus for that. So like, so maybe, it's... yeah, maybe they were like, hey, Dr. Disrespect or Logic? And they're like, you know what? Logic. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I have a question. Be... How, much, how much views you guys don't think you're going to bring to the tables? Logic? I think his yeah. first few days or weeks are going to be huge because people are just yeah. going to be like, oh shit, Logic's streaming, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then it's just gonna, it's gonna die. I mean, I think he's still gonna have a huge following because he already has like a, a large following. He had like a cult following in his mixtape days. Yeah. Well, and you know, yeah, so. his people are you know coming at his neck like, oh, you, you this and that. It's like if you go back to he's he he is a nerd like, you know. Yeah. He's always. I mean, to... Brendan Yuri from Panga the Disco is a streamer right now. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Not a lot of people don't even know that. Yeah, oh. Carl, Rampage Carl. from the UFC is a streamer. So is Mighty Mouse. Oh yeah, and Ronnie Radke. Yeah, Rampage uh, streams Carl. literally every single day, and he gets maybe five hundred viewers Rampage max. Is. I mean, yeah. he's usually got I like a hundred. I think maybe this logic move is gonna be like uh, the first of many like triple A fucking people. Like, because Rampage is a celebrity, but he's not like fucking Kendrick Lamar starting up a Twitch channel. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, the question Jackson? is, are we gonna get the Kardashians over here? Question mark. Uh, I would not. <laughs> I mean, is it just? Do you think they're trying to transition from being a niche gaming streaming platform to being more than just that, like a? Instead of watching YouTube videos, if you want to watch shit live, you can watch it over on Twitch, like in a comparable. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, or a, like, go ahead, John. It's a it's an ever growing business model, right? You can't just stick with the same like the same thing. Exactly. Works, but at the same time, especially with like with COVID, people are at their homes. They're at, they now know more people than ever know what Twitch is, and you know That's any true. kind of like streaming service or, or whatever they they know what it is because they were you know they ran out of stuff to watch on netflix and it's you know and uh i think i think it's a good move but like for like, sure it's you're gonna see you're gonna see crazy numbers just like when you know like summit streamed uh valorant the first three days or when that. dr disrespect made his comeback yeah it was you know you or when what's his name ninja played, played with drake you know what? Here's food for thought before I lose this. Um, so, like, think of it this way. Like, uh, from a from a, a musical artist's point of view, or even, a, like, a big actor, right? So, Logic, he's got a family now. He's a new dad, you know? And uh, think of it, instead of, like, just retiring from hip-hop, right? You can sign this giant deal with a streaming community and stream eight hours a day from your fucking living room. You don't have to go on tours anymore. You don't have to show your face at events, dude. You just have to fucking get out your, go into your office and make consistent money, especially these dudes that are looking at the numbers that people like Ninja and Shroud are bringing in. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, I can make the same money consistently make, do, using like half the fucking work, dude, and, and use the platform I've already established for my musical career. So it's like basically right. like retiring, you know what I mean, and it, without having to fucking go anywhere. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure he's still gonna make music and all that, but uh, yeah, I mean, right. He's he's smart. I'm surprised other people didn't do this because exactly now, with him doing this, it's it kind of leaves everyone else in the dust, and everyone's gonna be like, oh, well, fucking Logic did it already, so you know, cool, cool dude. You know, or think about like one hit wonders, dude. Like, all right, I got this banger out right now. It's really really hard to push my album. I can just start streaming Twitch, dude. People know who I am. Right, use your Maybe, use your cloud at the moment to be able to carry it on and actually create exactly, an enterprise from right. it. Exactly. Right. And right like, now, like currently, this is Twitch and, and streaming platforms are really the only live performance that you. I mean, they're starting to you know people are starting to do shows and stuff, but not on a broad scale. So it's like this is really how a lot of those artists are kind of you know reaching out and being able to you know show their fans like hey look we're still doing it like i know it's not ideal i'm at you know you're at your house and i'm at mine but you know you can still watch me perform right normalize it in a sense yeah there you don't know. have to be like a nick Merckx or a ninja to do fucking great for yourself on twitch you know not at all not at all no like someone like CDN who's still really big but he like he averages what like 10k now maybe 20 yeah you know? and was great I mean, I think, more than great. 
I think one thing too that might have you know kind of sparked this whole interest in at least the hip hop community is like how big Travis Scott was when he did that Fortnite performance or whatever. That dude showed his face like three times on Twitch and garnished whoever he was around like thousands and thousands of views. Yeah. And Fortnite caught on to that shit. It was like, fuck, dude, let's use this guy. You know what oh, I mean? Okay, he did that before Fortnite then? I didn't know. Yeah, dude, he was like, right after Drake played with Ninja, Travis Scott was right there. Juju was there, dude. And they like, like, like Ninja really like brought that shit about. You know what I mean? Like one day Drake was just like, yo, and ever since then, dude, like you all the time see like guest celebrities on giant streamers. It's almost, it's like, I, I, you know what I think it, it's like now? It's like, you know how rappers charge for a feature? Yeah. Imagine someone like Jay-Z is like, hits right. up fucking he's like, hey man, uh, for 100K, dude, I'll play Fortnite or Counter-Strike with you for three days, dude. Like, imagine if someone posted a link about Jay-Z playing Counter-Strike with Shroud. Do you know how many people would tune into that shit who don't even give a fuck about Counter-Strike? Right, yeah. yeah. That 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 is a... It's actually pretty smart, though, for both ends. I mean, obviously, if you can afford oh, to have have them on, you know it. But you know it will exponentially grow your channel. And the person that is getting the feature is the one going, hey, you're just paying me for the clout carry. I mean, secondhand clout, pretty much. Right. It's also great because they're reaching out to demographics that, you know, typically wouldn't be the one to pull up twitch or like gary said like they'd probably be like what's what's twitch what's counter-strike and now you're reaching out to those people and kind of getting getting them into the culture as well so i mean it's really cool to see i i think well i think you'd have a lot more daily people on twitch if they even knew about it i mean to be honest unless you had a reason to come or you were a gamer most people aren't even aware of twitch for i mean uh, understandable reasons it's kind of it's, it is a very niche thing in itself obviously getting bigger and bigger but i think they're trying to just take away the idea that youtube can be a streaming platform and bring the live action over to twitch to where it's a it's the household name of live streaming is twitch youtube you can watch your music videos or how to's and shit like that or you can watch your how to's live over here and keep up with all the people that you're so interested in invested in and I mean, while we're on that topic, uh, as far as like people like hip hop artists retiring to Twitch in a sense, like what about big Twitch streamers retiring solely to just uploading a daily YouTube video? Yeah. I've always you know, said like, that. There's a, there's so many people that could just carry it on and they don't do YouTube at all. But yet you yeah. get 15,000 viewers every single day. You know that. I don't know. And you're already creating the content. Yeah, if you have like a large following like Shroud, you know, and you don't feel like streaming for eight hours a day, you can just stream one full day, record it all, upload it over the span of a couple of days on YouTube and be set because people are dying to watch you play, but they don't have anywhere to do it other than YouTube. Right. Toyn, what do you think about all this? I don't know. I, like, it's it's one of those things, it's like, is it going to be a quick cash grab or is it something that might stay? Because I've noticed, kind of like how you say one hit wonders, is right. is it going to be a lot of people like uh, like fireworks, just a quick come up, pop, and then out? Or is it going to be uh, like a consistent views? Because I think if we have a lot of people trying to do their oh, you get mean it out. As far as features go? Yeah. Because well, I... I think <clears throat> this could lead into a. How do I say? The reason why I think Twitch is so good and why there's so many streamers are so well is because they're not doing it for the money. They're doing it because like they got the charisma, they got the love playing video games. Yeah, uh, if I think this might lead into a time where just people are like, "Hey, I'm marketable." Wow. Well, you know what I mean. It's like the lose the market of being less. So these guys are watched a lot because they're good at gaming and they're kind of like, you know, they got the charisma for it. Or is it like, "Hey, it's six nine." Yeah, he's, he does. He's not even playing games half the time. He's just you know talking. Well, and, you, and, like a mess and would stuff. you feel it would take take away from the integrity of Twitch and almost yeah. dishearten people like a small streamer to keep streaming whenever you're just having the overflow of clout, non gamers coming in and getting the views? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, well, here's my theory on it: is obviously the whole. So the, I'm going to compare this to a situation that was explained to me by. Um, 
I knew this mod who modded for a lot of like really big streamers. And she was talking about how, why you don't always see like these giant streamers hosting people outside of like, you know, there's a situation where Shroud saw this girl that was like a struggling mom and he just gave her a bunch of subs. And, like, and it was obviously going to be like a one time thing. Like these people were all going to sub to her this one time. So she basically just got like this large lump sum of money. But nine times out of ten, if like a big streamer hosts you, everyone's just gonna quit out of it oh, yeah, real right away. You know, it's not like you're gonna yeah. become famous all of a sudden. You know what I mean? Like you might get like a bunch of donations this one time. So I think the only people that are really gonna profit from having like a like a quote unquote feature would be people who already have like giant platforms, right? And and the, and it would be like a one time thing where they just garnish a bunch of money from like ad revenue and shit like that because they had like this giant influx of views because today they're playing with two chains or today they're playing with you know well, from what i know is uh logic i don't think is, it would have, oh go ahead uh, from what i know i think i don't think logic is going for that but i think that with him doing what because you know he's stated he loves playing video games and just wants to do that or whatever and, uh but i think with him doing that it's going to open the door or open up the gates of people you know in the industry's minds to be like oh shit well we should jump on it because it's it's going to be a trend or fad for a little bit of just right like, just we'll probably get flooded here hopefully we don't but it'll probably get flooded with what you know whatever hip-hop artists just pop artists or you know uh mm -hmm. just coming in and seeing that now that oh there's money to be had there well then i want that money mm -hmm. right it's just how that works you know and i yeah. don't want to be all negative because like for all we know we could bring like these guys can bring in new people they're like I didn't know I liked watching people play video games. And now you have a, uh, you know, them searching around for games that they like, and you can find new people. Um, well, it's so def. Like go ahead. Oh, no, you go ahead. Oh. I was <laughs> saying it's def. Oh, fucking oh, right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Final, go ahead. Go ahead. Fucking. But, uh, shit, I forgot what I was going to say. You go. <laughs> I was going to say it's not hurting. Like, like, you, like, like look how far the game, like, being a gamer has come you know what i mean like mm. the stigma the stigma on like yeah dude if you play video games you're a fucking loser you know what i mean yeah and like just bringing that much attention to one specific thing and making it like a normal you know like as much as we like to like whine and bitch about like things that we don't understand that people are bringing a ton of attention to like yeah i i try to empathize with stuff like that with like gaming you know it's like no one gave a fuck about video games no one like everyone looked at me like i was an idiot for spending eight hours a day video <laughs> so it's yeah. just like a, a normal thing like you're not like a weirdo for playing video games you know you're not like a weirdo right. because you didn't with your friends uh, last night you decided to stay home and play call of duty with the boys you know what i mean yeah i, I like that and I, like it, whatever it takes to do stuff like that you know i mean with anything that's like a stigma that's stupid as fuck and shouldn't be a stigma you know right like weed like look how like normal weed is you know you don't have yeah, parents yeah. walking around like you're a fucking bum if you like to smoke a joint after a long stressful day you know what i mean yeah definitely yeah. i mean i definitely still uh still deal with the stigma that comes behind gaming like uh i mean it's not yeah of course like at work you know they'll, they'll bust my chops and be like oh all you do is go home and play you know video games for five hours and i'm like well yeah but i also get paid to do it at this point now so like i, I don't understand where you're well and what do they where... what do they go home and do nothing well, or exactly, you, know, you go like, drink yeah. like it's it's comparable to yeah. who gives a shit do sure. what you want to do i mean i'll waste time my own way you waste time yours right yeah some people are stubborn like i got into the argument you know my buddy at work was like well, I mean, all those guys are just guys that live in their parents' basement. I was like, but I'm one of those guys that I pay all my own bills and I live alone, so I don't. It's just. Not I mean, you're obviously, <clears throat> you're obviously never going to be able to do away with like dickheads like that. No, but my no. point is, is it's normalized. You know, yeah. like people like to get weird about like LGBTQ shit being in like movies. You know, when it's like sometimes it seems like a little unnecessary, but the goal is to normalize it. You know what I mean? Yeah. That it's, so it's not such a big deal that, you know, your sister likes to date girls, you know what I mean? Or your brother decides he wants to be a woman one day, you know, like, right. It's, it's, it's to make it so where it's not like people fucking double take when they see something like that. And I think that that's great. I, I that. agree. I agree. Because I remember back in high school, the whole, you know, I remember, I remember, cause like when Halo 3 came out, like I know shit, I bought a 12 pack 
of gamer fuel. <laughs> and I literally had my parents – my parents were cool as fuck for doing this, but they drilled a hole through, through the top of my room so they could run an Ethernet cable yep. so I could play Halo. And I right. fucking played for a week, and I remember Dude. getting nonstop shit on from calling the video game nerd. Oh, uh, I got a fucking tender memory from Halo 3. Like, I had a 360, and I don't know if you guys had 360s back in the yeah. day that had the discrete error. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and my sister got her first job, and she, without me knowing, it was like the nicest thing she'd ever done to me. Because, you know, we were so at the point where we were like, ew, gross, you're my brother. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> she got a job and pre-ordered Halo 3 for me because I was a massive Halo fan. I talked to you about this coin. Yeah. But my 360 had the disc reader. It was broke. I was oh, playing Halo 2 on the original Xbox. So my sister takes me to go get Halo 3 at the midnight release but without me knowing. I thought we were going to the grocery store. And then I get it, and I'm all depressed, you know? I was like, great, I got this game, and I can't fucking play it, oh, you know what I mean? No, like, yeah, and we yeah, get home, and my dad has spent all day on the internet, like, because he's somewhat tech-savvy. He's still a boomer, but he knows a little bit what he's doing. Yeah. And he found a quick fix to fix my 360 so I could play Halo 3 on Midnight Release. Oh, no shit. Like, that's the so top funny. 10 fucking moment of my life, that was, bro. That's like, super I, clutch. Damn. Damn. I, yeah. And I, I remember shit. playing... SOCOM 2 back in the day, my dad did something like those PS2 headsets were trash. They'd break, you just wear them, you'd, you'd set them down like on a pillow and just like take care of them and they would just <laughs> still break. Uh, and uh, my dad got, yeah, I was like, I, I need a new headset. He's like, no, we're not buying you a new headset. So he literally sat with like one of those magnifying glasses with the, you know, for like electronics, like. Like soldering or something? Yeah, because well, he, he's an electrical engineer, so he, he knows his way around. But yeah, he, he rebuilt the fucking headset to rework it in. That's what's up. And I mean, I think it's something like the biggest thing you can take away from all this, like back to the point, is it's like we were lucky to have the parents we had. You know what I mean? There's a lot of our peers who like their parents thought that they were wasting their fucking time, you know? And like... The generation we're in now is so normalized, you know, you got kids buying their, you got people buying their kids, like Fortnite, Nerf guns, and, you know, and you, and you just see, it's just everywhere, it's normal, you know, and I think that's, like, really cool. I just bought my nephew a HyperX uh, headset what? for his birthday. Think... It's like 140 bucks. He's got a nicer headset than me now. But, and I yeah. think it's just so tight, man, it's just to see yeah, how no, far a lot of things are coming you know like say you want about the last couple of generations but there's a lot of good shit coming from it too you know like oh yeah there is i mean it's, it still blows my mind how these kids you know like i just like fortnite and like minecraft don't click in my head because i just never i built it in front of me with lincoln logs right you know <laughs> So I just get shit on when I go play Fortnite. Cause we're the like, boomers now, though, you know? Yeah. Like, we're the boomers. There's some stuff we're getting in football <laughs> that doesn't make years. sense, you know? But 20 years from now, it'll be just like, what? <laughs> See, told you guys. You know, we'll be the generation that they're convinced that you guys are idiots. You know? <laughs> how many people go play Fortnite? That's something I want to know. It's insane how many. It's it's a lot. Lot. My a lot. six-year-old son loves Fortnite. Because yeah, I played it's... a first game on Xbox, like my first game, not even warm or nothing, and I got my first dub solo. Oh, yeah, there are, uh, no, it's still There's it's a lot of huge. bots. I feel like there's I, a lot of bots. It, I don't know. Maybe. I, I don't know. I, don't, I, I just can't. I just, the whole building thing and shooting, it's just, you give me a gun, I'll shoot. I'm not trying to yeah. Do I was it able to snipe some folks. It wasn't bad. When it was strictly running around. And with the building, it wasn't too bad. But now that there's like, there's just so much exploits to it. and metas. Yeah, I was I was just so burnt out. I was so burnt out on battle royales. I played so much PUBG up until then, and I liked the military kind of tactical strategy of it. So I, whenever Fortnite came out, I'm like, what do you mean you can just get caught out of position and fucking build a <laughs> fort around you in two seconds? I'm like this is disgusting. Nobody, this takes no talent. Where now I'd accept it as its own game, and I cannot deny the talent in building and being proficient oh, in building. So, <laughs> I just accept, you know what, I suck at Fortnite. Yeah, I'm terrible at it. You know what, I just accepted they, that I'm they a They do boomer. need to get rid of Bloom, though. <laughs> Bloom and RNG should not be in games. We, uh, 
Well, well, my whole thing on the building is like I feel like that game is fantastic in every aspect outside of the building, and that is not because I think building is bad. I just like I'm just too much of a boomer to keep up with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like same, same. You got these 13 year old kids can fucking play the game and move a thousand like Apex, dude. Like I love Apex. Well, since when did people Apex. start holding controllers like they do now? I mean, I've I've oh, seen God. pictures of like fucking these grips they got on the kid, and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, way? dude? I, I play Claw sometimes. I play Who is Claw has been around right? That's since, since MLG. Halo. Yeah, since Halo. It's like Halo. like Pistol, Pistolero, or no, Pistol, what's his name? The pro Halo player, Pistol. Right. I think it's just Pistol, maybe? Yeah, oh, Pistola. 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 Pistola has played Claw since Halo 2. Who but the, guy... the, reason, the reason Claw is so nuts now is because every new game you play is so revolved around movement, you know what I mean? Right. That that because so the advantage to claw is like not taking your thumbs off the stick you press all the face buttons with your your finger mm -hmm. so that you are can do all this crazy ass movement without without being affected at all by having to press face buttons and that's why all these little 10 year old maniacs are gods you know unless they got scuff money <laughs> yeah <laughs> I so used to like have a scuff. So when you're playing clock, you say, so this finger here, this yeah. finger presses all your face buttons. So if your jump's right here, you're pressing it with this finger. It's crazy. You get carpal tunnel. I can't do it, dude. I've tried. Real, my hands are cramping just trying to hold. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to do it. Who was the Who was the guy that there was one specific player that was on Halo Two that I'm pretty sure invented? Um, it's out. Pistolero. What was it? I used. I normally sometimes play on uh, like both hands with a claw. On a PS4 mainly, PS4 controller. I used to have a scuff, like two, and both of them broke because, I mean, I'm already breaking my default too. What's a scuff? But I play a lot. A scuff? You don't know what a scuff is? A scuff oh. is a controller that's modded. Uh -oh. So, so you, you don't see have to that? Small. You see these buttons back here? Yeah. Oh, scuff okay. controllers were like some of the first controllers to start doing shit like this, where you had buttons on the back, right? Is it a, is it a so, if you weren't a, a zoomer lord and you couldn't play claw, you could use just, uh. just get paddles in the back of your controller so that you never have to take your fingers off the sticks, right? So, it's just so like say you want to jump, game. right? You're in the middle of a gunfight. You want to jump. You got to do this. Yeah. Take your finger off the stick, so you lose the advantage. Uh, that's basically just a, a, a fucking. That's why they gotta control. give them aim assist. That's why mouse and keyboard are always gonna be superior. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, we're, not, we're not getting into this. Uh, I'm I the, the I, I no I will say I hate the laser aim assist factor that i feel like is in fortnite it they removed that they removed it completely i thought they removed it and then put it back in that's what i thought well maybe they put it back in but they did remove I yeah because all them ps4 removed. players got shit on afterwards i mean there's a time and a place have your own tournaments with your aim assist i don't know i'm just salty on aim assist period well I think mean, with Fortnite specifically, I think that's a hard argument to make. You know, if you want to talk about topics, that could be a topic there. Aim assist and keyboard and mouse, right? But for the longest time, mouse and keyboard players had such a huge advantage over console players because building was so much easier for them. They could just macro buttons, but then the Zoomer PS4 kids like figured it out <laughs> and caught up, and now everyone's mad about it, you know? Yeah, but they're able to build just as good as PC players, but why can't you aim as good? I mean, if you've got, like, you, you just don't have the precision. And that's what I don't like. It has to do with the mouse. Because you can't, like, unless you put your sensitivity at a stupid level, and then at that point you're going to be overshooting a lot. With the mouse, you can literally spin 360 and stop. Where you See, stop but I know somebody who, and he made it to World Cup for Fortnite, does not use aim assist and he's gold nova in counter strike using a controller well that's because he has a background yeah, there are, there are. he's just a god you know what i mean just because it's yeah. possible he is he i've always been like you're just a prodigy i mean he's good at anything he fucking does like i can see in a competitive field that's cross-platform dude 
like, I think in Fortnite specifically, like, games like Apex, dude, right? Like, there are controller, there's, like, uh, I only know of a controller, play, one controller player that's a uh, pro and competes at a high level. But, like, that game is insane. Like, the movement and shit is just, some of the movement is just simply impossible to do on a controller. So, giving the few controller players that can keep up with mouse and keyboard players yeah. aim assist isn't a big deal to me. Because there's still, there's, like, there's like one. You can probably count on one hand how many of them can play But that. I guess it depends on how strong the aim assist is. That, that was right. my problem, was people could just spam L2 and constantly be as much as the spray would go up they could just spam right back to your head every single time yeah that's kind of well that's like halo like the reason halo master chief collection dies so fast on pc is everyone is like excited about it because like oh i could play one of my favorite games yep. on mouse and keyboard but it's just genuinely like from someone who was one of those people is genuinely not fun playing mouse and keyboard against kids on controller <laughs> it's not fun oh i got clapped dude whenever it came out and i'm like the aim is ridiculous i got like slammed yeah. well you're watching kids who are obviously mediocre at the game winning gunfights against mouse and keyboard players because of aim assist yeah <clears throat> it's actually talking of halo 3 with the aim assist it's so bad that i fuck up because it'll, it'll snap and i'll actually move my uh, True. stick because I, i'm like what the fuck just happened because it's like you're literally like this far from his head and it goes Wah! and i'm just like what like, <laughs> i mean a mouse a mouse doesn't have acceleration somebody said i mean a mouse can have acceleration but i would want zero acceleration pure sensitivity and raw input yeah I mean, acceleration yeah. would essentially just be pushing your dpi up to something ridiculous right? like, well but you've got the smart acceleration too where it tries to compensate the fact that you're swinging so fast to the right that it overshoots it because it thinks it's doing something right for you or that's why i've never liked any acceleration on it i just do raw input yeah. figure out the sensitivity go from there uh, I tried I, to use the, go ahead john i tried to use a controller uh this was probably two or three months ago Maybe like two months ago, I tried to use a controller on COD, and it's just... I mean, I can't use a controller anymore. I just, Jerry's I been cracked on fucking COD with a controller. Uh, it's not fair, dude. I'm, try I'm trying to tell you I, that. It's thank you! Fair, oh. I mean, I'll tell you... Will, like, instead of sitting here bitching about it, dude, I'll just switch, bro. I ain't got no problems. I'm fluent <laughs> on both, bro. And I'm so sick of, like, wrecking somebody, dude. They just turn right. around and... You know, the big advantage of Call of Duty, because Call of Duty, to me, personally, it's not, like, quite as noticeable unless you're in, like, a medium to long range fight. You're, like, anytime you have to, like, hold the mouse on this dude's head while you're, like, drilling him, and then you switch to his screen, dude, and he's all over the fucking place. But because he's got a little bit of audio aim, dude, his bullets are hitting me while I'm, like, nailing him. <laughs> all of my shots are all, like, precise headshots. He wins the gunfight because he's got aim assist. And I said, after about 85 times of that shit, I said, no, sir, bro. I, <laughs> said, bro. I said, no, sir. I mean, it can also be a ping differentiation too, on who has a higher ping, who has a lower ping as well. No, I'm right. Right. I've experienced that shit way too much for it to not be a case of that always. So, yeah, that too. like, for me, personally, like, I can see where. Sm like slight slight assistance would be necessary on a controller because like if you're a controller dude kids right oh i don't think it's fair you're missing shit you know like you can't you don't have the luxury of like a pc player who's got a mouse keyboard like oh i'm on like 85 sensitivity let me just drop it down to like 84 83 you know what i mean because with controller you gotta fuck with your dead zone you gotta fuck with what could like kind of control you could buy a 20 dollar fucking mouse and beat people with a controller's ass you know mm -hmm. see but i just feel like then they should not be in the same category I mean, right. have console tournaments with aim assist, have PC tournaments, and 
Now I understand wanting to meld the two and find a good median. I would I, I would like to find that. But I feel like you they've given aim assist way too much power to cater to like you said, people that should be losing gunfights are winning them. And I say and, and I guess I use this analogy. If you give a, a mouse and keyboard player a controller, chances are they might get a kill with aim assist, even though they've never used a controller. You put a controller player on a mouse and keyboard and they've never used it, chances are they will not be anywhere in getting a kill. There does take skill to the mouse and keyboard. I mean, I'm not yeah. saying that there isn't more precision, that it's not this, but I'm just, I just feel like there's different leagues, honestly. Well, here's my theory as to why it's never going to go to way, right? You're never going to not see crossplay. You're never going to not... I mean, certain games now, like Smite for specifically, because it's the only one I play that I know completely... Like, you could play casual controller players. It's all mixed together. But when you queue ranked, you are queuing your peripheral. Not necessarily the system where you're on, but if you're playing on a controller, you're going to be queued with controller players. If you're playing mouse and keyboard, you're going to be 